Now I want to do something called factoring where a is greater than 1. And when you do these, you're going to notice that, hey, factoring out a common factor doesn't work. We have to attack these problems a little differently. This is going to be procedure oriented. In class, I'll explain the why for how it works and why it works. But for right now, we just want to work through the procedures. I want you to see what you need to do to be successful as far as the review tape goes, okay? So factoring where trinomials are a greater than one. Now, I don't have it listed here, but you've tried common factoring, and a is still greater than one. Step one is you're going to find factors of a times c that add up to be b. Remember our general form, ax squared plus bx plus c. Remember that a is the number in front of the x squared, and c is the last number, the whole number that's written there. That doesn't have to be whole, but it almost always is. The second thing we're going to do is we're going to write the middle term using the factors that we got here in step one. And then we're going to factor by grouping. Now, let's work through this. I've got two examples, and that's going to take about 10 minutes total with my starting explanation. I've got 5x to the second plus 12x plus 4. The first part, find factors of a times c that add to b. Well, a times c is 20. 5 times 4 is 20. I need factors of 20 that add to be 12. Well. Hopefully you'll work your way through and eventually you'll come up with 2 times 10. 2 times 10 multiplies to be 20. Now I know some of you are going crazy, but 2 times 10 is not 4. We're not doing it just for the C, now we're doing it for A times C. It's 5 times 4 multiplies to be 20, okay? Adds to be the middle term, which is 12. All right, now step 2. Write the middle term using the factors. So now I'm going to re I'm going to rewrite the whole problem. 5x to the second plus 2x plus 10x plus 4. So notice how I wrote the 2 and the 10 in there. And also notice that 2x plus 10x is 12x. So we didn't change the value at all. We just ended up rewriting the 12x so that it looks different. And now I say factor by grouping. Hey, I've got four terms here, don't I? I can group them. So, what do 5x to the second and 2x have in common? Remember, we do them by pairs. These both have an x in common. So they have an x. And when I divide both of those by x, I get 5x plus 2. And then what do 10x and 4 have in common? They have a 2 in common. When I divide the 2 out of both of those, I get 5x plus 2 as well. Hey, both of these have a 5x plus 2. That's what happens when you factor by grouping. So we're going to write 5x plus 2 times, and we write the leftovers that are on the outside, and the other parentheses, x plus 2. And there you have it. It takes a bit of work to say the least. 5x plus 2 times x plus 2. You end up doing that factoring by grouping and you go from there. Now, I'm going to go on ahead and I want to erase that top part. Because there's some people out there that always ask, wait a minute, what if you didn't write 2x plus 10x? What if you had written 10x plus 2x? So, what would have happened if I would have instead written 10x plus 2x. I wrote it in the opposite order. Still, we're going to group, we're going to factor by grouping. I can pull a 5x out of both of those, can't I? So I'll pull the 5x out on these first two. Divide by 5x, divide by 5x, that leaves me x plus 2. And then with the second one, they've got a 2 in common. Factor out a 2, and that leaves me x plus 2 there. Now they both have an x plus 2 in the parentheses. Got 
this. And a 5x plus 2, that's what's going to go in the other parentheses. So we end up with the same answer. They just end up flipped around, don't they? So it doesn't matter which order you write the middle two in. All right, let's do the second one. I'm not going to do it both ways for the second one. Find factors of A times C that add to B. 5, 12 times negative 5. Oh boy, that multiplies to be negative 60, doesn't it? I need factors of negative 60 that add up to be 11. Now, your numbers get to be a little bigger. I start listing. All right, negative 1 times 60. Well, it multiplies to be negative 60. Not even close. It's positive 59. Negative 2 times 30. Not close, but we're getting closer. It's negative 28 when you add those. Negative 3 times 20. Well, that's 17. We're getting closer. Let's see, 4 goes into 60. Negative 4 times 15. Hopefully you got the little ding, 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 ding going off inside your head. So, negative 4 and 15. That's how I'm going to write my middle terms. Negative 12x squared minus 4x plus 15x minus 5. Okay? Okay, now I'm going to factor by grouping. These both have a 4x in common. So when I divide 4x out of both of them, that leaves me 3x minus 1. These both have a 5 in common, so I'm going to pull the 5 out. And that leaves me again, 3x minus 1. So if you take a look, when you factor by grouping, what's in the parentheses has to be identical. So I get 4x plus 5 going inside of a parenthesis, and 3x minus 1. It doesn't, if you had written the 3x minus 1 first, the order doesn't matter. Anyway, keep these rules in mind. Again, this is just procedures on this tape. In class, I'll explain why it works. Good luck.